Hello. I'm live, live from my friend's kitchen, the improvised setup today, but in the midst of moving, it's it's nice to take time to, to come and draw with you all. So I'll just um, wait a moment for some people to roll in. I've been, uh, we've come out of the countryside into the city of Göttingen, uh, in between moving. Hi, Sketchy. Nice to be here. Uh, Anish, hi. Nice to have you here. And so so who's here? I can see people flowing in. I just caught the very end of Mike's live stream, which was great. Uh, hello, Ensign. Uh, I wish I had more time in the past month to, to dedicate to Mike's class because I was really excited about it. But then preparing to move uh, and coordinating the kids it's been a quite a crazy month. Nikira, I live in Brooklyn. Nice to have you here. So where's everyone watching from? I can see there are a few eyes watching at the moment. Um, yeah, it's been cool for me just spending some time. We've been in between our two flats. So now we've been in the city and I've been walking around and just on the the natural ink side of things. I've been seeing things growing in people's gardens in the city that I'd love to make ink with. Um, so there's some really interesting stuff growing and uh, ripening at the moment for ink making. Hello, Hilda, Stina, Katie, nice to have you here. Kati. Um, Anish from Kakata. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be here with you. So yeah, there are very exciting things ripening at the moment. And today I saw pokeberry or the last couple of days we've been walking past the neighbors here and there's pokeberry growing in the garden and this was something that i didn't think grew here and there's a some really fascinating colors and like fluorescent pink ink that you can make with pokeberry um and i've seen it from jason logan the the make ink author a wonderful book uh, this pokeberry ink and every time i've seen someone post something about it i just have been envious pokeberry envy and I thought it was only something from um, North America. And the last few days, I've seen it growing here in people's gardens. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to have you all here today. We'll be, um, and yeah, everyone's chiming in where they're from. It's cool to have such a, a nice mix of people here um, from India and Europe and the States. Um, Illawarra, awesome. Uh, Daisy's here from Hanover. It's just wonderful to see some people from the Tuesday night drawing sessions here. Uh, yeah, it's just lovely to draw with you all. And in the midst of all this moving kind of chaos, um, and we've been a bit nomadic the past couple of weeks, staying at different people's places. It's just nice to take time to draw and, and be here together with you all. So, We'll be drawing Amber today. I'd just like to introduce you to, to Amber. This is a very joyful, wonderful photo that we'll be working from. And the link for the photo is below the live stream here, or the, the recording. And um, yeah, I asked Amber kind of what, what was going on in this photo. It just looked so, so joyful and said she was at the beach with friends and wanted a photo in front of this lovely blue wall and a friend made her laugh a lot. So <coughs> that laughter and joy, it's definitely coming through. And the reflection in the glasses is so awesome. And um, if you click on the the link for the original reference photo, it's much, there's much more wall and the portrait is small at the bottom. And I just thought it was really a lovely, outstanding composition. <clears throat> so really interesting to work with. Um, I'm going to get drawing. If you have any questions or yeah, want to ask about ink making or drawing, anything you like, then feel free to put it up in the chat and I will make an effort to, to read your comments as I'm drawing along. Um, all right. So um, on my friend's kitchen table, here's something cool I wanted to show you that I saw. Um, this is acorn and avocado ink. I've made some more avocado ink this week um, between moving boxes and dismantling furniture. And at the moment, the acorns are ripening here. And this is like 
Um, Acorn ink is my, my go-to dark ink for inking. And these crazy looking things are strangely formed acorns. And I just found them all over the road. Uh, I was walking along and like, what are these things I'm stepping on? And I looked up, it was an oak tree. And it's super, super fascinating. So these, I noticed on some, it was the, the acorn is kind of taken on some weird shape. I don't know if it's a kind of illness of the tree or some parasitic thing. But it reminded me a lot of oak galls, which I've never been able to find. But this is like a strange malformed nut. And maybe I'm hoping it's going to be really high in tannin and make a really awesome dark ink. So I've collected some of these for some an acorn ink experiment. Totally weird. If anyone knows anything about acorns, this is from the same tree. So some of them are turning into this weird shape. If you know what this is, then please let me know. Um, I'd be... I'd love to learn. I always love to learn about things and get to know these plants better. So today I thought I have my um, my cut pen here on the side, uh, which I love. But there's some really cool fine detail in the glasses here. You can see the silhouette of the friend making Amber laugh. And so I thought I was just going to start with the drawing with uh, this metal nib, which is a totally valid thing to do. I love working with my own pens, but can get really crisp, sharp details with this. And as I mentioned, this is a acorn and avocado seed ink. Um, and usually we can make blueberry ink, yes. And this is a um, 425 gram per square, to, square meter paper or 200 pounds. It's a really nice heavyweight watercolor paper. Blueberry ink is awesome. It will change color with time, but it's a really lush, vivid color to use with. And um, you can actually make it from frozen berries because uh, freezing and thawing will just make the, the juice of the berries come out by themselves. So blueberry ink is really a wonderful ink to make. Thank you for asking, Anish. Um, yeah. So I really like drawing glasses. Um, so I'm just going to get going with the gla glasses. And I think there's a yeah, the really fun, interesting shape um, on the, in the lenses there. So we'll go with that. And yeah, I really love the, the movement to the right, this like triangular shape, which is going to be um, just super fun to draw, I think. So it's cool. There's a, I've got some kind of gluggy sediment from the ink on the pen. Uh, it's always handy to have some paper towel on hand. Um, so I just kind of carefully looking at that shape and just draw a line and then go with it, um, which is, you know, the, the joy and challenge and sometimes frustration of working directly with ink. And yeah, with these nib pens, you can get some, I think, lovely subtleties in the line variation, just with the amount of pressure um, that you apply. For those who haven't used ink much, um, or sometimes find that it's kind of this uncontrollable sp um, splash of ink that ends up on the paper, um, it's really good once you've dipped your pen to just tap it to the inside of the the ink vessel, and that will um, avoid help avoid getting that initial big blob of, of ink straight onto the paper, which can be disheartening at times. So has anyone here, anyone else been uh, finding interesting things and wondering if you can make ink with it, or maybe experimenting with different ink making? So I recognize a few names from the, the Ink Naturally class. So I know some of you have already been making inks. Um, and it's just a wonderful, fun thing to do. And it's oh, it's been difficult for me. Um, as we're moving, I haven't had so much time to, to forage and make ink and store things. Um, and I would just love to be collecting everything. That's, uh, that's out there now. 
I got some tansies recently, Stina. You were, you're the first one to tell me about tansies and they, they just smell amazing. So it's also like a medicinal plant, I think. Oh yes, thank you, Sketchy. Right now there's a special offer in the Sketchy Art School for two or more classes. Um, so get my Ink Naturally class and maybe Mike's class, um, anyone's class. France has all these amazing classes, Drawing with France in September and Mike's Contour Hatching in September. There's so many exciting things happening and uh, I wish I could do everything. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, moving into the new house tomorrow so it's shaping up to be a pretty busy time. It has been pretty busy. Um, yeah, so here I've just um, been focusing on what's inside the lens. So we can add some darkness because it's a super nice contrast. Um, as I've been chatting here, just kind of filling in these these shapes. And you know, most of that's probably going to be filled in with ah, oh, Hilda. Um going to be filled in with ink to get that really nice contrast and a, a bit of just a little bit of width to the frame here. So Hilda has um, been doing something exciting, making ink with copper, salt and vinegar. This is the most incredible blue color. It's, it's like an unbelievable, unreal color. And I had thought for the background of this, it would be nice to use copper blue, but mine is not accessible at the moment. And it's interesting, all my, uh, the, the vinegar has evaporated and it's just left these blue copper and salt crystals uh, in the jar that I was preparing it in and it, that looks wonderful. So I, I'm not sure about how healthy copper ink is and I, I haven't used it much and I, um, it's up to everyone to educate and inform themselves about the materials you're making and using during your natural ink making. Um, so a lot of things you really need to respect what you're working with. And I think um, I, there, there's iron in, in this, which was made from rust and uh, vinegar and salt. Um, and and I think iron is kind of, I don't know, it seems a bit more commonplace than, than copper. So just something to take care of and be aware of. Um, ah, Stina's just asked, um, I think so, that our, I, I'm, yeah, drawing on Tuesday. Every Tuesday we meet and draw for two hours and Every Tuesday this year, I've I've been there um, on holiday and while moving and uh, like rain, hail or shine. I've it's been wonderful drawing live with people on Tuesdays. So our <clears throat> telecom technician will be coming on Tuesday morning to get our router set up. So I'm hoping that Tuesday evening it's all going to be good to go. If it's not. We have friends a few houses down the road. I might be able to run down there and draw together. So I'll let you know. I'll be putting it up in Instagram. Um, that's my main point of communication for the Tuesday night sessions. But I, I would, I'd be sad if we didn't draw together on Tuesday. It's, it's just so much fun. So yes, you know, it's very likely we'll be drawing. Um, ah, okay, cool. Here, yeah. and Sims looked it up. Um, Galade Knopengal Vespa. So I know that oak galls are um, they're created by wasps. Um, is this a special gall that grows on the tree? Uh, I mean, on the the acorn, the the fruit itself, because oak galls often grow on the branches. Um, and these have fallen and dried and shriveled up, so they are um, not inhabited anymore. And some of them have like an open hole in the bottom, so maybe if anything did live in here, then I presume it came out. So I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with oak galls, although I haven't found them. But thank you for looking that up for me. 
um, and I think it's really yeah, it's important to to let these plants um, and insects kind of run their life cycle. Um, because they, yeah, we do. We just want to take from the abundance of nature, which is freely given to us. So I would yeah, never want to forage or harvest something which is still has an important role to play for for any life form. But yeah, thanks for looking that up. Knappangal Vespa. So that was my my question. Is that actually are these oak galls? Because it's actually the nut which is kind of transformed into something else. Um, if you find out anything else on that, I'd be really keen to know. Um, looks like I've uh, kind of drawn the wrong shape on the other lens. Oh well, just keep keep drawing. It'll work out. Just had um, all of my children and uh, and Kira just walk past in the background, having just had a bath. Thank you very much to our friends who've allowed us to, to borrow their flat while they're gone. It's been awesome. It's kind of like taking a little holiday um, in between moving. Ah, oh, Charlotte's here from Florida. Nice to have you here. So as a, in case you haven't watched me drawing glasses before, um, I just think it's such a cool, uh, cool place to start from and kind of use for your orientation through the rest of the face. And, and here is this high, con high contrast and it's really fun kind of thing to draw. So I think that's maybe why I like starting with glasses. Mm. Just lots of cool, fun shapes to draw. And here, like the, the overall almost triangular shape of this is super fun. And, and there's so many fun shapes within the portrait, the glasses, the smile, um, these awesome patterns and the scarf and clothing. It's just. Yeah, very fun photo. So I was chatting through Sketchy with Amber, and she said she might uh, join the live stream. So a very special thank you to Amber, whether you're here or not. It's it's great to have such joyful, wonderful photos to to draw from. So what else are people drawing with today? What are you drawing along with? It's really great to see people's work from the last couple of weeks of Jess and Spilly. It's a nice, nice to draw that, that couple together. Okay, this is a an interesting point here with the you know, we've got this slanted perspective, and I've mentioned this in the past. Um, for some reason, I, as I'm drawing these tilted heads, and maybe other people experience the same thing, I tend to straighten things out a bit and give it a, make it more level than it actually is. So with the, the corners of the mouth here, it's really interesting just if, um, to kind of imagine a straight line without placing it, without drawing it. And 
just sort of lining up like with the shape of the lens here, finding a place where if we dropped a line straight down from there, where would that corner be located? And then so here we've got this the, the nose piercing, which is kind of in alignment with the this corner of the mouth. And then it steps up quite far into it, we're just orienting from this nostril here. Um, and we end up around here, I think. And I just noticed in myself, I was just going to start drawing. And maybe even that's not high enough. But that, um, that tendency to flatten things out. And that's something in myself, and hopefully it's useful for other people too, to catch that moment where I'm about to do something, which I know, oh, this is, this is something where in the past I've had lots of room to learn. So it's, uh, it's good to check up on that again and just make sure um, that it's lining up. All right, awesome. Here's some more great educational information from NSIM. Cool. Oh, sorry about the shaky table here. So th these were normal acorns. And then the wasp put its eggs in there. Ah, okay, cool. The larvae pupate in an overwinter. That's good to know. I will not make ink with them. I'll um, put them back somewhere outside where they can be can just do their thing um, and yeah, leave them. Thank you so much for this information, looking it up in SIM. And yeah, so I'll be able to put these back and just let them do their thing. So it's good to know that over winter, they, they will pupate and start to grow. And next year, um, go on to find more acorns and create wonderful little acorn goals for us. Thank you very much for that information. That's awesome. I love the internet. I love you people. I love the exchange of information and learning together. It's uh, such, a, such a wonderful thing. So cool to share. I'm so thankful for this community too. Um, on Instagram and here, sketchy. Uh, it's it's just so cool to be you know, in exchange with people and sharing and learning together. It's just a beautiful thing to do. There's so much to learn. I'm so glad you were able to look that up for me. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thank you, John, for some additional information. That's awesome. So one year of normal acorns and next year the wasps. And something Stina had mentioned um, recently was that the same oak tree won't produce acorns every year. And that it helps establish some kind of equilibrium with the, the animal community, like wild pigs, for example, that which love acorns, that then there are not too many um, so the, the same oak tree won't have acorns every year. But I guess those little wasps will go find where the acorns are. Uh, I just love this through ink making and making art um, to then be really learning more and understanding more about nature and the overall amazing system and world that we live in. It's such an enjoyable aspect of this. Oh, cool. Anish, um, a beautiful ink formed from orange and red powder. So it's usually used for cooking. That's awesome. Do you, do you know what exactly those powders are that you would cook with? Um, orange and red powders. Sounds awesome. Kitchen ink. If you're able to share with us what those powders are, I, I'd be super interested. Um, all right, back to the mouth. I've kind of talked about wasps and oak galls and wandered around and kind of come back to this mouth here. Um, and I decided I, I, I think that 
that mark that I made here, which was going to be my guide, was a bit too low. So put it a bit higher and then it's got this really nice kind of fall sweeping down here, which looking at the tip of the nose kind of flattens out around here. So just I'm just checking this form a few times and then just kind of um, let it flow down. That's cool here with the, the lip and the smile, like all this smile muscles can see the some kind of form and thickness to the lips and the teeth have such a wonderful shape. Ah, I was wondering, it's, it's used to make food really hot. So is it some kind of chili powder that you are painting with today, Anish? That's cool, brave. So a common thing with drawing teeth, um, like if you draw all the lines where you know that the teeth are meeting and intersecting, it can really kind of be overwhelming. Um, so there's really a, a wonderful opportunity here just to draw some negative space. So just that shadow space in between the teeth is just going to Im imply that form that's there without having to outline the teeth because kind of we're working with ink in this way when it's such a dark ink. It's um, I, I feel it's it's safer to avoid um, putting too much line work into the teeth. Could make it a totally stylistic decision to really uh, accentuate those teeth, but I'm not going to do that today. So just some. Um, Maybe some outlines, and like there's this edge over here too. And just really wonderful uh, kind of triangular form over at the side of the mouth, just so nice. And just those few dark shadow shapes is just implying so much about uh, the form of the the teeth and mouth here. So this would be a place where it'd be good to use a broader pen rather than scratching in all of that. Or to use a brush. But when you use a brush with ink, and depending on the saturation of the ink, it'll often be kind of less intense. So we're about halfway now, still got plenty of time. Next month I'll be working on my first ever mural, which will be fun. And I'm just gonna treat the wall like the page of a sketchbook. And so I'm super curious to see how that's all gonna turn out. Just checking to see I'm not casting too much shadow on the drawing. 
and we can move this all up a bit too. The, the mural that I will be painting um, is going to be demolished. So I'm going to draw portraits or paint giant portraits of the people that have been living in the house and they have to move and faces will be there, they'll have to move and after a time the building and their portraits will come down. So right now it's it's really helpful and fun to establish uh, uh, your your brightest brights and darkest darks and yeah, here are just a few key points. We've got this intense contrast, and it'll be nice now to add some more to um, add some more contrast to the glasses because it's just such an interesting area of the portrait. Ah, cool. So we can use a, a sponge in a mural. It's, it sounds like a cool tool. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't like totally planned it out, just kind of, um, it'll be like a half improvised thing. I'm not sure who these people are yet, but I'm going to paint on the wall and yet to, to meet them, which is all a bit tricky with the Corona restrictions. Um, you hear this, this kind of gradient, this variation in, the ink on the bottom side of the glasses here I thought was interesting. It's, it's not dark enough yet, but there's this lovely kind of shift in the, the hue of that. Yeah, and it's going to be my first time painting at that scale with the mural. And since I like flat tools so much, like broad edge, brushes and um, pens and flat brushes, I just thought. And and some stuff I've seen from other um, amazing, inspiring mural artists. It's just they just use massive flat brushes. So that's something I would like to try out. And sponge sounds cool too. I think it's, it's yeah, great to experiment and see what kind of different tools we can make and use to, to fit our purposes. And discover new, new mark making. Ah, oh, okay, here there's, um, I may want to take some of that ink away over here because there's, maybe I can just push it over, spread it out. Because this is the, the light behind the, the edge of the face. So I want to retain that variation in here somewhat. Although squinting down, it all gets lost, all that information. I'm a big fan of squinting down while looking um, at the reference and drawing. And if you, well, in this case, when as I, in my current lighting situation, if I squint down at this, all that information inside of the glasses is getting lost anyway. So you could totally get away with just filling that all in, making it all dark.
interesting here just to trying to gauge the shape of the chin and how far it should go down, how tight. Just I put down that edge of the lip here to to get an idea of the shape of the cheek and chin. Ah, as a course of Jess and Charlotte. Um, use the techniques of Leonardo da Vinci if I need help. Um, yeah, just get help from from the masters. I don't think I'm going to kind of be as subtle and detailed as da Vinci in my mural painting. Be pretty kind of stylized, bold line work style I'm, I have in mind. It's kind of it just feels like a, a a natural stage to start or close up the the border of the face, which is. Uh, Kind of close this form that we have or partially enclose it just to have a that clear portrait shape established and that's that's fun could almost uh, stop there but we'll keep going Somewhere I heard a really cool quote, I think from some oil painter. I don't know if it was um, Richard Schmidt um, about um, being able to put the brush down at any time and to say that the the piece is finished. And that's a, I think a um, really interesting idea to have just to think at any stage, whatever we're working on could be finished, and maybe we just leave it at that. And I think it's a really um, kind of liberating idea because I used to. It's been super helpful and useful and fun for me to do all these sketchy live streams and and classes, and to within the space of an hour. To create something that I um, feel comfortable with, I guess, because I, I guess that's the aim <laughs> to, within an hour, to have something where I'm like, yeah, that's that was a, an hour well spent. And that I, I just remember spending days and weeks on paintings and just pushing paint around and never feeling like it was finished. But I think this kind of approach is very fitting to <clears throat> parenting and the current kind of phase of my life which I'm in, where it's just good to get something down and, and for, for that time it just has to be done because there's always hundred other things that need to be done as well. So how's everyone going? I feel like the chat is very quiet today. So but I see that you're still here. It's great to have you there. You don't need to chat. Maybe you're all totally focused on drawing and painting. That's great. Have many of you um, had to move much with kids? This is my first time moving house with kids and it's a totally different experience than just being alone or being two people. 
the of the uh, the needs and well-being of the the little people to cater for. And kind of all this compulsory downtime where we just have to hang out and, and spend time with the kids. There's always so many things to coordinate and have planned, but it's it's really great to have to then stop everything, even though there's so much to do, to just stop and, and be there for these lovely little people. Our kids, we have three kids in the zone. That's right. Everybody's in the zone. <clears throat> I've said it before, but there are so many fun shapes in this photo. It's uh, having a lot of fun drawing it. <laughs> yeah, that, totally, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, keeping it feel like keeping it feel that, that feeling of home for the kids um, is like so so important, right? And yeah, we've we haven't been able to do the switch straight from one flat to the next, but it's been important just to have some you know special things, certain toys, or just the bedding. That the kids are familiar with um, just to kind of have that sense of continuity for them <laughs> the challenging thing about keeping the toys there for the kids to play with <clears throat> is that <laughs> for us anyway then every day there's just always so much to to tidy up because <laughs> of course everything gets unpacked and played with <clears throat> okay, Anish, that's a totally interesting question. <clears throat> um, you've always learned to start from top to bottom. That's interesting. I haven't really um, technically learned anything. I've never had anyone who said, this is the way you do it. But even if I had, I think it's it's often interesting to kind of question that and think, well, why why do I have to do it that way? Um, in in some things, I guess it makes sense to go from top to bottom. But I just started with the glasses because when I look at this picture, the the glasses just keep um, drawing my eyes back. And since that's like what I'm interested in, that was just the place where I decided to start. Looking at it now looking on the screen, comparing the reference and the photo, I think the glasses should even be bigger. They should be more dominant in, in the drawing. But in my version, they just end up being smaller glasses. But yeah, I often find um, that I start in different places and it's generally where my attention goes. I just start drawing there. And, and as I draw by just comparing and filling in shapes and that I generally um, I, I don't have a structure like the Loomis method or something that I work into that I'm just kind of bouncing around from shape to shape comparing things and I just tend to go where my eyes and attention draw me and that's that's just the way I do it so um, so it could be yeah it could just be interesting to try it out for a while if you've learned to go from top to bottom there could be total value in that and to, to having a kind of system set up. But if you want to kind of break this, the, the cycle or the pattern that you have, it could be interesting just to go where your eyes kind of draw you to. And I do a lot of, <laughs> um, I'm totally not offended, Anish. I'm a very difficult person to offend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not offended. Feel free to ask things. Um, I do a lot of really fast drawing, like on Tuesdays, we have uh, a drawing session, which if you're awake, you may, may be asleep at that time, because um, we meet at 7.30 German time. Uh, I do a lot of really fast drawing, and there's, um, yeah, I just have to start drawing, because if you've got 30 seconds or a minute or four minutes, 
it's really it's just good to get something down and so i think that's why i've kind of followed this development of where my eyes go is where i start drawing and there's no real rule or system to the way i choose it um yeah so i hope that is a um, a worthy answer to your worthy question i'd be interested to know why you um why you learned that you should also go from top always go from top to bottom that sounds interesting <laughs> jordan i don't know how we <laughs> manage breakfast with three kids um yeah so moving home is quite a um, a, a puzzle We're more like a mobile with all these moving pieces that all have to fit into place at the right time it's one of the kids here hello i can just coming to look what I'm doing. But if you look, put your head up a bit here, they'll be able to see you. Try not to bump the table or bump my pen. Iken had uh, his first day of school yesterday. In Germany, there's this special thing they do where the, the, the first school day is actually on a Saturday and they have this whole cool kind of ceremonial rite of passage that they do for all the kids and they get a big um, a big thing full of like sweets and stuff which is something that didn't happen in Australia when I was a kid start school and get given all this sweet stuff can you please not lean on me because otherwise it's gonna bump my arm it'd be hard to draw thanks so tomorrow is Icon's first full school day ever so that's totally exciting our big boy <laughs> and sketchy here so all this writing which you'll learn to read it says hello i can thanks for sharing daddy with the sketchy community so thanks for sharing me i can so anish after just talking about um how I I started in a totally different place to you. I've kind of worked my way around, starting here where my attention first went, working down the face and the shape, and then kind of finishing uh, with the, the top. But we've still got some time. We'll be able to fill in some more details and work back around. And will you? Were you on your way somewhere special, I can. Do you have to go brush your teeth or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're drawing at home. A lot of these people are drawing at home. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Someone here, and Sim. Yeah, the Tsukatuta, exactly. <laughs> Icon's been pretty excited about his Tsukatuta. This person just wrote and said that they love their Tsukatuta. Um, and so Ensim just told me that these things have like baby wasps inside of them, which I wasn't sure if they had already left, but over winter they will grow. And then the start of next year when it gets warm again, the little wasps will come out. And once they've left, then you can use them to make ink. How cool is that? No, no, we'll have to put them outside. We don't want the wasps coming in our house because they need to eat acorns and they were, I guess, or maybe they eat other things, but they won't be any of those inside. So we need to put them back outside. Yeah. Put them somewhere where there are oak trees. And out the back of the garden, there's a big oak tree. So that's cool. Hi. Do you want to Thanks for visiting. Yeah, so now we have like 10 minutes left. There's, there's so much potential to fill this with patterns, all these lines up here, all these amazing shapes in the, the shirt. Um, so I think we could have a 
super fun time um, filling in all these patterns. Um, and I, I feel like at the moment it'd be nice to establish with the time that we have left now, just to establish some important areas of the contrast, which is really you know, going to draw our attention. Um, so the, the lenses of the glasses have dried, but the surrounding area around the face, I think it's often nice to have a border. A beard is often a, a good border, like um, this kind of, or any kind of clothing. Or, um, I often enjoy when the portrait has something around it to, to hold it. So it's really nice that the, the top, top edge of the scarf is quite dark. So I can put some more ink in there. Is it time for you to go to bed? Like, yeah, you better go to bed. It's school tomorrow. I'm back. Awesome. Good night, Dad. Good night. Oh, that's so cool to hear, Sheila. Um, but now that you begin with glasses, that your drawing has improved as you use as a point of reference. That's that's so cool. Um, I'm glad to hear that that has been of of use to you. Yeah, I just um, that's exactly. I just find it such a useful kind of place to something to hold on to. Now looking at this, I wish that the lenses were bigger. It's like that was, you know, that's the thing. Um, they're so cool, but some glasses have bigger lenses than others, and in my drawing they're just smaller, so that's okay. But it's interesting to see how that I, I started with that and started with all this attention to the glasses, and um, the rest of the portrait just kind of expanded around the glasses compared to what was in the reference. That's okay. Um, Bibilal just asked what kind of brush this is. This is not a brush. This is a stick pen, and usually I make them from elder. Yeah, this is elder as well, from the elderberry bush. And it's cut, you can see here, I've cut it with a knife from the top and from the bottom, and it has a super nice broad flat edge. So I started off with this pen, um, where I was doing these fine details and stuff. This is this normal kind of metal nib pen, and I just love these broad edges. And you can just make them yourself from sticks uh, and experiment with different sizes and different shapes. And I think it's a really fun, enjoyable drawing tool. So thank you for asking. Um, it's not a brush, it's a stick. So a stick pen. <laughs> cool. Stina is organizing shower time with two kids while drawing. Yeah, that's awesome. But you're also, yeah, just it, it's it's just cool having kids. That um, you know, these wonderful little people, and it's super challenging, and there's always so much to coordinate and take care of, and um. But yeah, it makes life full and uh, don't get bored. Sometimes it would maybe nice to have a bit more time for ourselves, but um, yeah, life is very full. I think I don't waste as much time as I used to before I had kids. No, I. I just can't afford for time to evaporate on Facebook or something. Um, become more more effective in my my use of time because it's become such a, a precious, valuable thing. Because it's good to have time to share with these wonderful little people. Even though 
it doesn't always just feel wonderful. That's just part of it, part of the, part of life. Ah, I am. I just. I'm not going to be able to get into all these cool patterns and stuff. Um, I'm just wondering, like here, do I just fill in this dark shape below the face, or start and kind of leave some room for those patterns, or I can maybe just do some quick, loose, shapey things, just so that there's something done here. Sometimes these dry stick pens on paper make some pretty funny noises. It's just like a weird kind of almost like an animal sound. Don't know if you can hear that too or if it's just me. Yes, David, good question. So the pen, not brush, you can make brushes from sticks as well. Um, but I, I soak it beforehand, and it's not to make it more pliable, but it's a good idea if it, is, if it was a, were to be a brush, it's a good idea for it to, um, to soften up before you start using it. But the reason I soak it in water first uh, is because the, just the, the structure of the wood is going to draw that ink or water into it. And if you let it soak beforehand, it starts soaking up the water because otherwise it's just going to soak up a lot of ink into the wood. And that's something I'd rather avoid. And and the, the flow of it, um, rather than, sometimes it's really cool to have a dry pen and get this kind of a dry brushing uh, effect as you're working with it. But if you really want it to flow, then sometimes it can be good to start off with a, a pre-soaked wet pen because then it's just this, you know, the bonus of not, instead of drawing the ink into the, the fibers of the wood, it's staying there and it's ready to be drawn with. So yeah, soaking it beforehand is a, can be really helpful. And I have um, I've made some brushes with wood, with birch twigs, uh, which I didn't find as, I didn't, uh, maybe I just didn't try it long enough, but um, it didn't kind of fit my flow as well as these stick pens do. I like this simple broad edge of the pen. But in future I would like to get into maybe doing oil paints with natural pigments as well, self-made pigments, and, and that'll be interesting to discover kind of different realms of possibilities of natural brushes and stuff as well. That'd be really cool. Um, uh, I, I hear you, Stina. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder too. Okay, the ink that I'm using, it's a, a mix of, for, for those who weren't here in the beginning, thank you for asking, Bibi Lo. Uh, the ink is a mix of avocado seed and acorn ink. So it's a self-made ink. And yeah, I think, I don't know, if you can see what I can see, it looks like a fairly faithful kind of re reproduction of the color here. It's kind of a, a reddish, warm brown color, so you can you can have it be really intense. And I think using these finer brushes, um, finer pens, like the the metal nib here, you can get quite intense dark line work. Um, but as you start 
dragging it and spreading it around. Um, it's it's a less saturated color, and you could make it much more saturated by just reducing it further and reducing the water content of the ink. Um, but I enjoy working with it like this. You can also, with a brush, you can do washes with it and you can build it up in a really nice kind of watercolor kind of way. Um, yeah, and acorn ink is one of, one of my favorite dark um, homemade inks. So thanks again for, for asking about the materials. And just in case you're wondering, this is like a heavyweight watercolor paper that I'm drawing onto. So it can handle wet media without getting warped and um, <laughs> miserable spice. That's a beautiful name. And I'm glad you think it's a beautiful color. Yeah, I, I just these like warm brown tones, I think it's such a joy to to work with this lovely kind of sepia tone to them and um and we're about to to wrap it up and just as we're talking about the kind of colors of this ink I thought even though it's a very light background maybe it'd be interesting to i don't know should i brush some some ink into the background oh, we're right at the end here it's actually already time um um Sheila. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. What did you used to hope for? Oh, <laughs> that's referring to Stina. Yeah, okay. Uh, hoping for, for time, time, time to yourself. Um, I don't know, no, I guess what washing into the background is it's really not necessary at the moment. Um, there are some areas where it'd be interesting to kind of brush into, but I'm I'm fairly happy with this, and we're kind of it's kind of time now. If anyone has any last questions, anything they'd like to say, uh, if you're posting your work that you've been doing while you've been drawing along, use the hashtag Ink Naturally, and tag me on Instagram or uh, Sketchy at Dylan underscore Sarah. Um, I always love seeing your work. So uh, it's great to to be drawing together, doing stuff together. I, I I definitely feel like I could just keep going on with this one for a long time. Uh, but it's bedtime. The kids are calling. They have shared me, and uh, tomorrow is a big day. So it's been wonderful being here with you. Thank you very much for drawing along. And yeah, if until tomorrow, if you would like to sign up for two or more sketchy art school classes, you can use the code SAS30 and save 30% off the classes. So that would be a pretty cool thing to do. And uh, there are things in the works for more ink naturally in the future. And there's the Inktober 2020 portrait challenge coming up in October, which is probably going to be a very lively, exciting, um, inky month. Inktober is always fun to observe and participate in. So it's, it's an honor to be contributing to that with together with Sketchy this, this year. Um, but I guess for now, almost, oh, a little bit here. This eyebrow is not dark enough. It's shadow shape in here. This is almost done for today. Um, so Daisy, it's been really challenging. Um, happy to challenge, happy to share. Uh, Clover, you're very welcome. It's been a wonderful having you. And all of you here, Katie, Diane, um, Sheila, th thank you all. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's great to be here with you and for you and for me. And it's, uh, it's always wonderful drawing together. So thanks a lot. Come back next 
Sunday or come draw, draw with us live on Tuesday, which is always a lot of fun. Um, more info on that on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what you've all drawn. So um, when you're ready, uh, upload, post, tag, and um, thank you all. And yeah, I hope all goes well with the move and school as well. So thank you very much for the well wishes and, and thanks for joining me today. Um, take care and have uh, a wonderful time. And uh, yeah, thank you.